here's something that means pure summer. Loading up the car with kids or the whole softball team or walking or biking over to the local ice cream place for a treat. Twists, sprinkles, sundaes, time to hang out and chat and laugh in the sunshine. We sample that summer vibe at Nadine's in Ogdensburg on today's Story of the Day. Support for Story of the Day comes from Kenny Drugs, now offering a new mobile app to help patients better manage prescriptions for themselves and their family. More at KennyDrugs.com. And Clarkson University, offering over 95 programs of study with campuses in the Hudson Valley, Central, and Northern New York. More at Clarkson.edu. Hey, I'm David Summerstein. It's Friday, August 11th. First up, last month, lithium-ion batteries at a solar farm in Jefferson County caught on fire and burned for six days. The incident is raising concerns about how existing and potential solar projects will affect communities and the environment. Catherine Wheeler reports. On July 27th, Jefferson County emergency officials were called to a solar farm in the village of Shimo. They found a fire in a cargo container full of lithium-ion batteries that are used for storing electricity from the solar farm. Nearby residents were asked to shelter in place as officials monitored air quality. That was lifted later that night, but the batteries continued to burn for almost a week. Jefferson County's Fire and Emergency Management Director Joe Plummer says these kinds of fires are not your typical house fire. The batteries are classified as hazardous materials, and it's the first incident like it in the county. Because of that, Plummer says the state has taken over the investigation. The biggest thing is the unknown, is that nobody really knows and we're not getting good data about how to fight these. So one of the missions of this fire was also involving the state is learning more about how to fight these fires and what to do with those and and how to deal with them. Convergent, the company that operates the solar farm, says no injuries were reported and that they're working with state and local agencies as they investigate. From what officials can tell, this is the third battery storage fire in New York State so far, with the other fires in Orange and Suffolk counties. State Assemblyman Scott Gray says there are a lot of questions that need to be answered. My major concerns that are paramount in this whole thing are both public health and public safety. Public safety in terms of the fires and then public health in terms of having to address the fires uh, once they have begun. Those are issues like toxic smoke and vapor from the burning batteries potentially blowing into residential areas. Grace also concerned about the water firefighters spray on equipment, which could then leach into groundwater. Grace says solutions could include companies installing an underground bladder to catch any chemicals that run off or changing the way batteries are stored. Gray and State Senator Mark Walzik are taking one step to address concerns. They're introducing a bill that would require solar farms to have a safety data sheet readily available for emergency responders. We're going to have to put some measures in place going forward uh, that address battery storage. And we also have to put some policy measures in place, uh, legislation in place, for lithium ion batteries, right, in terms of, you know, safety measures. These solar and battery storage facilities are a part of the state's lofty climate and green energy goals. And while there isn't battery storage at every solar facility, the batteries at solar farms are an important way to store and release electricity when the sun isn't shining. But these fires are causing ripples of concern beyond Jefferson County. The town of Canton sent a letter voicing its concerns about a proposed solar battery storage project on Rich Road, especially regarding the environmental impacts of the potential emergency responses, like water and air quality. Gray says these events put what policymakers need to do into perspective. Foresight is going to be, you know, what kind of policies and what kind of legislation we put in place. What have we learned and what is what we're going to do to put in place? In response to the solar battery fires, Governor Kathy Hochul recently announced the formation of the Interagency Fire Safety Working Group to study what's happened and to prepare for the future. Catherine Wheeler, North Country Public Radio. Two people camping in the Adirondacks last week were struck by lightning and rescued by forest rangers. According to the DEC, the campers were on an island on Fallensby Clear Pond near Tupper Lake when lightning hit a tree they were camping under. One of the campers suffered a swollen ankle and the other person experienced some hearing issues. Rangers also rescued an injured hiker on Cobble Hill in Lake Placid last week and found a missing hiker near Wanakina.
There's something quintessentially summery about a long line outside an ice cream shop and a crowd of hot people enjoying a cold treat. Reporter Amy Feireisel saw that exact scene in Ogdensburg on a hot summer day. She had to stop by and bring us this audio postcard. Nadine's Ice Cream is a small white shack in downtown Ogdensburg. There's a few picnic tables with umbrellas outside and a near constant stream of people walking and driving up to get their ice cream fix. A mother and daughter duo are licking ice cream cones at one of the tables. Mom is 31-year-old Sylvia Addison, and she says they come here pretty often. Um, You see a lot of families coming this way for it. The picnic area is nice, and they always have it nice and looking and beautiful. Her daughter scoots over, tightly holding her cone, ice cream melting down her fingers. I'm Adeline, and I'm seven. I like how they have twists and sprinkles. What's your usual order? Twist. With sprinkles? (laughs) What kind of sprinkles? Chocolate. Inside Nadine's, I find two young women working the little ordering window. One of them is Natalie Lovely. She's 22 and has worked here for more than a quarter of her life. I've been working here for seven years, and I honestly think this is the most popular ice cream spot in Ogdensburg. Every day, the line is past the sidewalk for... The tour of Nadine's is a quick one. It's essentially a 15 by 15 foot box filled with lots of metal machines and containers. Um, this is our hard ice cream cooler. We have the flurry machines, and these are the warmers for the dip coatings. And these are all of our sauces and toppings. Lovely says the most popular item this summer is a new invention, waffle nachos. What on earth is a, uh, a waffle nacho? Yeah, they're like chips. So they go on one side of the container. They're little waffle chips. And then you get two sauces and a kind of soft ice cream. So tell me when you While I ask my next question, happens. Lovely starts to giggle. <laughs> I was, uh, Do you want to come on in? <laughs> Two heads have popped around the back door. It's 5 o'clock, and the night shift workers are coming to relieve the day shift. Tegan Bell is one of them. I'm Tegan Bell. Um, I'm 22 years old, and I've been working here since I was 15. So I started working the same age as Nat, same time, same year. This seems to be a trend. Employees who stick around every summer for a long time. Bell says it's fun to work here because the owners trust the workers and pretty much leave them alone. I like it because I'm super comfortable here. And I feel like I have control of what I'm doing here. There's not a boss peering over top of me and stuff. So it's fun. I like it. Another trend. Everyone here is a young woman. Is it mostly girls who work here? Only one boy. Only one boy. Always one boy. Always one boy. That one boy walks into Nadine's a few minutes later. He's the last night shift worker. Uh, My name is Jordan Dupree. I am 17 and we are at Nadine's Ice Cream. How long do you work here? Uh, a couple months. I got hired beginning of summer, yeah. Oh, you're the newest hire? Mm-hmm. Okay, and I hear that you're one boy, the one boy. Yeah, I'm the one boy. He smiles and shrugs. I don't know, we all just work in the same place. I mean, I see all these people on the daily, so... We're like friends, family in here. While I've been inside, the crew here has probably served 20 people, making smoothies, scooping hard ice cream, and filling slushy cups. As she prepares to head home, I ask Natalie Lovely what it takes to work at Nadine's. It takes a lot. We, we live in Augensburg, so that is, that is something. That is something. What do you mean by that? The things people make up to order here, crazy. We have um, fruit flurries where you can pick a fruit to put in there, and some people will want the whole menu in their flurry. <laughs> but Lovely and her co-workers are happy to oblige. Amy Feierisel, North Country Public Radio, Ogdensburg. Wouldn't it be great to have a map of ice cream spots all over the North Country so you could find one wherever you go when you're on the road? Well, dream no more. We've got one. Check out NCPR's ice cream map on our website. We made it last summer by asking you what your favorite local ice cream shop was. Nadine's ice cream is on that map, as are dozens more. So bookmark it on your phone and find great local places wherever you go. Just search for the NCPR ice cream map on our website, ncpr.org. We have more news there all the time, of course, and through the weekend, ncpr.org. Music today by famous letter writer of Plattsburgh and Dan Berggren of Boston Spa. Have a great weekend. I'm David Summerstein, North Country Public Radio.